In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about myelopathy. Myelopathy, which means an abnormality of the spinal cord. So a spinal cord abnormality. Now, myelopathy is usually a focal problem of the central nervous system because most of the disorders that affect the spinal cord will just affect one part of it or a, a smaller area of the total amount of the spinal cord. And depending on how much of the spinal cord is affected, myelopathy may cause somatosensory, motor, or autonomic dysfunction for parts of the limbs or torso connected to the affected spinal cord levels and all the levels below. So let me write a little bit of that out, so the kinds of abnormalities we can have. So let's say we have a lesion of the spinal cord, an area of abnormality, maybe about halfway up right here. So that could cause somatosensory abnormalities. Somatosensory. And the pattern of that would be all the somatosensory information trying to come in at that level, in that dermatome of the affected level of the spinal cord, but it may also affect all the levels below that, all the dermatomes below that. And the reason for that would be that information may be able to make it into the spinal cord, but then the axons that try to carry that information up through the spinal cord might not be able to get that information through that area of abnormality. And this is a finding that's kind of nicknamed the sensory level of a myelopathy. And that can be very characteristic of a myelopathy. There's not a lot of other abnormalities or places you can have abnormalities in the nervous system that'll give you this kind of pattern where one dermatome is affected and all the dermatomes below it with somatosensory loss. You can also have motor abnormalities. And the type of motor abnormalities can depend on where the lesion is. For the most part with myelopathy, what we're gonna see is upper motor neuron abnormalities below the level of the lesion. And the reason for that is because the upper motor neuron axons that are coming down from the brain may not be able to make it through that area of abnormality so that all the myotomes, the groups of muscles attached to spinal cord levels below the level of the lesion, may have upper motor neuron abnormalities. And if the both sides of the spinal cord are affected similarly, then this would usually be fairly similar on both sides, which is common with myelopathy because the spinal cord is such a small structure that often an entire level or most of a level is affected altogether. Now where things get a little more complicated with myelopathy and the motor abnormalities is that you may also get some lower motor neuron abnormalities right at the level of the lesion because in the spinal cord are the somas for those lower motor neurons. They're going to try to project out to their myotome, to the muscles that are innervated by lower motor neurons coming out of that level of the spinal cord. So depending where the problem is in the spinal cord, you may be able to find lower motor neuron abnormalities, but most often we're seeing upper motor neuron abnormalities with myelopathy. And then we can also see autonomic abnormalities. Autonomic, because there are axons also, like the upper motor neurons, are axons coming down from the brain to the spinal cord that are going to control some of the autonomic neurons that are going to come out of lower levels of the spinal cord. And in particular, these axons seem to have a lot to do with control of urination, defecation, and genital function. So that problems with the bladder, the bowels, and the genitals are very common with myelopathy when these axons involved in autonomic functions are affected. So in some ways, this list is very similar to problems of the peripheral nervous system, where in nerves in the peripheral nervous system, we have axons that carry information about somatosensory, lower motor neuron, and autonomic functions. But a difference here is now we're starting to get into upper motor neuron abnormalities, usually much more so than lower motor neuron abnormalities because the upper motor neurons are in the central nervous system, including the spinal cord. And at least with myelopathy, the autonomic abnormalities of control of urination, defecation, and genital function are often seen with myelopathy, whereas that's, that's a less common thing with problems of the peripheral nervous system, although it may happen there as well. And then the pattern of how we see these abnormalities distributed through the body tends to be quite a bit different for myelopathy, where there's a level matching a spinal cord level, and then abnormalities of all the dermatomes and myotomes below that level as well.
Now a couple of terms are often used as kind of shorthand for myelopathy at different locations. One is called paraparesis. Paraparesis or paraplegia. Parasis means weakness, plegia means no movement. But paraparesis refers to weakness of both legs, so similar weakness in both legs. And that's often used kind of synonymously for a myelopathy that's about halfway up the spinal cord, where the lower trunk and both legs may be predominantly involved, but the arms are spared. Because if the myelopathy is below the level on the spinal cord where all the nerves are coming and going to the arms, then the arms won't be affected by that myelopathy. But now if you have a myelopathy higher up, at or above, where all those nerves are coming to the arms, then the arms, as well as the legs, may be affected. And if there's weakness of all four limbs, the term used for that is quadriparesis. Quadriparesis. Or quadriplegia, if there's no movement whatsoever. And there's also a term tetraparesis or tetraplegia. Both are in use. Quadriparesis is kind of an older term, but probably more commonly used. Now there's lots of different kinds of pathology that can cause focal myelopathy syndromes, including mechanical, autoimmune, neoplastic, infectious, and nutritional disorders. Mechanical disorders are quite common causes of myelopathy, and that can include sudden injury to the spinal cord from trauma, traumatic spinal cord injury, or you can have a more slow compression of the spinal cord. And that's usually from spondylosis, degeneration of parts of the spine which then slowly compress the spinal cord. The autoimmune disorder multiple sclerosis commonly causes a fairly rapid focal demyelinating lesion of the spinal cord. Neoplasia, particularly the spread of cancer from other tissues into the spine, often compresses the spinal cord. And then a couple of less common causes of myelopathy are the nutritional disorder, deficiency of vitamin B12, and the infectious disorder, human immunodeficiency virus. And both of those can cause parts of the spinal cord to slowly degenerate. So more on all of that later, but I just wanted to mention a little bit more about myelopathy, and particularly some of these patterns of abnormalities that we commonly see with myelopathy.